Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you so very, very much for joining us right now. My Bible is setting open to the book of Galatians in chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, we begin the second paragraph in that book today. In a moment, I'll begin reading at verse 6. I hope you can get your own copy of the Word of God out and join us there. Read along with us. Why don't you get a piece of paper and something to write with to take some notes? And above all things, I want you to get a free sample packet of gospel tracts from us. Now, to do that, you'll need some information, and we'll tell you about how to get that information in just a moment. Well, let me, begin this, let me begin this way. What is the greatest challenge to us as Christians in the 21st century? Is it uh, the rampant immorality we see? Is it the divisive social issues that we're dealing with? Is it the increasing hostility that we see of people towards God? Friend, these are all dangers for sure, but I would venture to say that our biggest threat is religion, religion that draws us away from from the gospel. Some religions openly oppose Christ, but others are far more subtle. They use Christian language, language that you already know, but they're in so doing, they give these familiar words a different meaning. They have their own meaning and their own twist to what that word means. If such groups sound Christian, then how in the world can we know if we are preaching a different gospel or listening to a different gospel, as Galatians 1, 6 is going to say here in just a moment. Can I real quickly give you some things to watch out for? Let me give you four things real quickly. How you know if you're listening to somebody who is preaching a false gospel. Number one, if they talk about salvation through anything other than faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. Number two, if there's a refusal for people to see Jesus as the eternal, listen to me, as the eternal God in the flesh as their only Savior. Number three, if we find that people are giving more importance to the word of men than to the word of God. And then number four, we find leaders who do not provide Christ-like guidance through careful biblical instruction that the Bible talks about. There are those who want to lead you and lead me and lead people into another gospel. We need to learn God's word. We need to know it well enough so that we cannot be deceived. That's going to be our focus here today and tomorrow. Get your Bible and join me, Galatians chapter 1. In my hand right now is one of our gospel tracks. This one's entitled, A Tribute to Mother. A Tribute to Mother. This is not simply a track to use on Mother's Day, although a number of churches do use it that way. It's not just a track to use at, oh, let's say a shower for a new mother. I use this track to give out to people in my travels. If you've listened to the broadcast, you know that I have to eat out because of my travels a lot. And I often eating alone and near to me, I'll see a table, either there's a single lady or a group of ladies. Some of them times they're they're older ones and I'll go up to them and I'll have this track and I, I usually sniff in the air with my nose. It looks probably rather strange, but I'll sniff in the air and say... You, you, you people smell like mothers. Well, immediately I have their attention and they're looking at me. I said, my mother is gone to heaven and I cannot honor her anymore. Could I honor my mother by giving you a gift? And immediately they're, they're wide open for this. I give them this track and say, listen, this track talks about a, a kind of mother that my mother was and the kind of mother we need today. Would you gals take this track and would you read it as a, as a gift from me about my mother? You know what? I've never had them refuse this gospel track. The biggest problem I have is I only usually I only have one and everybody wants one. Well, friend, I want you to get this track. 
at the end of the program, my announcer is going to come back on and giving you some ways by which you can give to me your name and mailing address. When you do that, I'm going to send you a sample packet of all of our tracks. This one, a tribute to Mother, will be in there. You be ready. Get that information. Ask for the tracks and do it this day, this day, this day. All right? Well, come with me, please. Galatians chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. Here's what it says. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. I'm going to just stop reading right there. As I said, today we uh, we begin to introduce believers to the salvation of God. In verses 1 through 5, we saw the introduction to God's Son to saints. Now we're introducing to the saints the salvation of God. I'm going to be using two word titles to help me walk through this section of Scripture. Let me give you uh, the first three sets of those words right now. Get a piece of paper and jot them down. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to talk about, first of all, the true message, the true message. Then we're going to talk about the traitorous men, traitorous men. And then thirdly, the twisted minds, twisted minds. Now, I've got more titles, but that's enough for today. We'll not get to them all today. I began the broadcast by saying that there are some of those attempting to alter the very gospel of grace, the very message of the gospel. So today, let me begin with clearly stating what the gospel is, and thus my first title, The True Message. The True Message. Now, you're not surprised that there are folks around trying to pervert the gospel. That very thing has been going on by Satan since Genesis chapter 3, and people who are actively involved in trying to pervert the gospel are serving Satan. Now, some people don't know they are. Others willfully know they are because they don't like the gospel. They don't like the salvation of God. I don't know why, but they don't. Their heart is so hardened and deceived that they'd rather believe a lie than the truth. But we need to answer, what is the true gospel? I'm going to give you some things today. Jot them down. Uh, They're probably not the slickest way, but they're the clearest way. Four things real quick. First of all, the gospel is about God. The gospel is about God. He's the one that designed it. He is holy. He is perfect. He is righteous. He is loving. He is a, a being that has a holy hatred towards sin, and he's angry at sinners. He not only hates sin, he's angry with sinners. In his holiness and righteous fury, he has displayed his love. Now, isn't that amazing? In his, in his holiness and righteous uh, fury against sin, he has yet displayed his love and grace and mercy towards sinners. Now, due to his holiness, God must punish sinners, but in his love and grace, he wants to prevent this punishment from being carried out on sinners. Now, I've been making a lot of statements here, and so far they just come out of Mark Smith's lips. Let me put some scripture to these right now. Jot these down. 1 John chapter 1, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 8. 1 John 4, 8, God is love. I hope you know that one. Jeremiah 31, 3, God has loved us with an everlasting love. But we're told in the book of Habakkuk, an Old Testament minor prophet, Habakkuk 1, 13, that God is of purer eyes than to behold evil. He can't look upon sin. We're told in Psalm 7, Verse 11, God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. He did not say in that verse he's angry with wickedness. He's angry with the wicked, the doers of wickedness. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, the soul that sinneth shall die. Exodus chapter 34, verse 7, God will by no means acquit or clear the guilty. The Bible is absolutely clear that God both loves sinners and is angry with them at the very same time. Do I explain that to you? No, I just tell you that the Word of God is blunt about both of them. 
Second thing about the true gospel, the gospel is about the helplessness and the sinfulness of people, of sinners. That's what we read in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're told in the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 21, by the works of the law, by the doing of the law, shall no flesh, shall no person be justified in God's sight. The third thing about the true gospel is this. The gospel is about Christ as God's sin payment, as God's payment for our sin. Romans 5, 8, probably one of my favorite verses to use in evangelism. Romans 5, 8, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But wait a minute. Back up two verses in Romans chapter 5, and let me tell you what verse 6 says. It says this, when we were without strength, without ability, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for the religious. He died for the sinners, those who are just in great stink with sin. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, Christ in his, in his own self bear our sin and his body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. One more thing about the gospel. The gospel is about receiving Christ personally. It's about receiving Christ. Knowing the facts about Christ is wonderful, but what are you going to do with the facts? You must, you must personally receive Christ. John 1, 12 puts it, puts it as straight as I know. But as many as received him, Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, friend, could the gospel be shared more eloquently than I've just done? Absolutely. The answer to that is yes. Could the gospel be made clearer than that? Probably so. But that's not really the issue right now, is it? If you're listening, you understand the gospel. You're a sinner. God hates sin. He's angry with you. And you deserve to go to hell. You bought the right to go to hell. The wages of sin, the payment for sin is death. Not just physical death. That's part of what sin has brought to the world. But it's talking about the second death where God casts sinners into the lake of fire. But in the midst of God's angriness at sin and sinners, he was moved with his compassion, sent his only begotten son to die on the cross that you and I through him can be saved when I was seven years of old, I got it. I understood it. Somebody told me, and I bowed my head and bowed my heart to receive Christ. You say, Brother Mark, I'm way past seven. Well, it's time to get saved, my friend. Today is the day of salvation. Cry out to God in mercy. Repent of your sin. Tell him you're the sinner. Tell him you're the reason Christ died on the cross. It was your sins. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to take away your sin debt. Ask him to give you the gift of eternal life. And he will. He's promised. But as many as received him, to them gave he the right, the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on this name. Neither is there salvation in any other name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Christ is the only remedy for salvation. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. That's the gospel. Have you received it? If you have, are you telling it? Oh, we got a job to do. Amen? Let's do it. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.